Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by the legendary Gary Spain. If you haven't checked out our match preview by now, make sure and check it out after this. But um, we're here. You actually might remember Gary from our uh, all-time 11. Gary was the whiz who knew all the players ranging way back to now. But uh, we're going to do our starting 11 for the game versus Switzerland. And I think starting off, I think we're both being in agreement. Darren Randolph has to be the keeper. He, he he will be and he has to be the keeper. I think there's there's no doubt about that. He's um he's been in great form in the, the campaign so far. He's playing regularly, so he's going to he's gonna start. Mm. No it's question. interesting you say he's he's playing regularly. He interesting fact from the weekend, he played a hundred consecutive games for Middlesbrough. Oh, okay. I didn't realise yeah. he was that yeah, I knew he was playing yeah, I was Every talking week, to him today I about it. I didn't like realise it was um, hundreds. I mean, that's some record. Yeah. yeah, I congratulated him today when I was speaking to him uh, yeah. in the car park. So he he was quite happy. Okay. So if he can manage to, to do what he normally does and produce a couple of high quality saves against the Swiss, happy days and keep us in it, yeah. or 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 let us win it. So a clean clean sheet on yeah. Torres and Ice will do fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Darren in goals. Um, no, no one really getting near him right now. Um, right back. Well, right back is Seamus Coleman. I mean, captain. You, you, captain. You could have, you could, could have an argument from Matt Doherty, but unfortunately, he's not available. Yeah. Um, so on Thursday, it has to be Seamus Coleman. Um, if Matt was available, I would still like to find a way to have them both in the team. But Thursday night, no question. Yeah, no, right I totally, back, captain. I yeah. totally agree with you. Now, Cyrus Christie is in there as cover just in case anything happens, and I do think. Cyrus is not the best and he's he's openly admitted that James Coleman's better than him and stuff like that but I do think he gets a lot of unwarranted stick um, but I do think if he does maybe play against Bulgaria maybe you know it might be time for France to just get a bit behind him oh, rather than giving absolutely. him a bit of abuse. I, he's, I don't like to see our players getting stick because I mean Cy is, always gives 100% and that's all you can ask yeah he's not as good as Seamus Coleman but he, he is still a decent option and yeah, I, I would I, I I imagine Seamus will not play against Bulgaria yeah. because he's got other things to worry about. We need to try out some players, but yeah, Sai is is good backup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next two positions no, actually do you know we will go other fullback. Um who's been probably up there anyway with our being our form player at the moment, uh, Emma Stevens. And I do think since he's came in at left back, there he is. He's really taking the shirt. I don't see anyone getting near him. I yeah, I mean, it's probably the start of the campaign, you would have had arguments with saying you play Matt Doherty, you play other people that out out of position or something like that. I, I, I the, the debate is over. I think Emma Stevens is going to be left back. Um, yeah, he's just a natural fits in yeah. there perfectly. You know, he's good defensively. He's good going forward and. I think he proved that again against Denmark. You know, he can mix it with with the best yeah. as well. You seen him against Chelsea there the other day. Uh, he was fantastic. He set up the goal for Callum Robinson, and uh, he had a lovely little cameo when he beat about three Chelsea players as well. Yeah, you can check that one out. <laughs> and he, he already has a little bit of a highlight reel as well. Did he do like a, a pirouette as well? In, yeah, it was it against Leicester, I think, uh, which led to another goal. Uh, so. Was it? No, sorry, it was Crystal Palace, uh, which actually led to the goal. But um, yeah, ended there. So we've Darren, Seamus, and Enda in there. So our centre half uh, partnership, who we would like to see. Okay. By the way, this is not the team that we think Mick's going to pick. This is the team we would like to see start again. Okay, well, I, I think Shane Duffy uh, will. I, I obviously would yeah, like to yeah. see him there, and he will be there. Um, I, I suppose the first point of debate then would be, I suppose, between Richard Kyo and John Egan. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe for Thursday night, if I was still picking, I would stick with Richard Kyo. He's never left us down. He's got that bit of experience. But with John Egan playing now in the Premier League, it's it's probably going to going to get close very soon. And in in my mind anyway, and I'm, I, I think Mick probably still will go with Richard. But in my case, I probably would just about go with Richard. Yeah, well, I, I, I'd like to see John Egan play just purely because he, he's now mixing it with the best in the Premier League. Now, I know I said uh, in the preview that he's made a couple of mistakes, but I do think he'll learn from them, you know. And you, you've seen, like, they, Sheffield United, like, they, they didn't bow down. They went to the literally the final kick, and he was actually up in the opposition's box. And I do think if Zuma had to knock that ball, I think Egan was there to, 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 to notch at home. I do think, it, look, if he... 
I wouldn't be against Richard Kell being in there, and that's more than likely what's gonna what's gonna happen. But I do, as as you say, it's gonna be close and close and close and close. The more the season goes on, the better Egan plays. I think he's gonna get that spot ahead of Kell at some point. I do see the partnership thing that you're talking about. It is a settled back four if you have Kell and uh, and Duffy there together. So just purely because of that, I'm gonna go with what you're saying, and I'm gonna go with that four, um, because we do have to agree on it. Okay. Um, but no, your argument makes sense okay. uh, to, to play the two of them in there. Long run, I would like to see Egan come in. Yeah, I, I think I think Egan will will come in in the yeah in due course yeah. in due course in the near future anyway. Yeah, and we're going with a four-three-three formation, I suppose. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah I think that's okay. what Mick is playing, and that's that's what I think. We're okay, go so for. your defensive midfielder, Glenn Whelan. I think um, we may have had a. Discussion, but I, I, I'm a big fan of Glenn Whelan's anyway, and I, I don't see another option at the moment. Um, with Harry Arthur out and with James McCarthy out, um, it has to be Glenn Whelan for Thursday night. Yeah, well, there's, there's there is other options with Josh Cullen and stuff like that, but uh, from from listening to Mick in his press conference, which you can check out on that channel, excuse me, um, he did say it's not really a game for debutants, so as you said again. It looks like he's going to go with with uh, with Whelan. From what I gathered, from what the general kind of chit chat was, it looks like it's going to be Whelan. And uh, I'm not sure how happy I am about that because not because I'm not a fan of Glenn Whelan. I am. Uh, it's just more so the fact that he hasn't really played that much this season. And I look at Josh Cullen, who's really you know done well. So far for Charlton this season, I know it's a big game, and not to not to bring him in for he's not even been capped. I understand that, but I'm just saying he's played more football than Whelan. Uh, Harry Arthur, I know he's he, he's had to pull out, but he was playing more regularly than uh, Whelan. Uh, James McCarthy was probably playing more regularly yeah. and got more of a preseason on the bench than, than Whelan as well. So there is a lot of players in that certain. I know it's a specific position that we're talking about. So, and I do think. Whelan doesn't have to do that much run in that position. You, you're, you're, you're more or less kind of going from side to side between left back and right back. You're kind of going in, in between the lines there. You're kind of protecting that that line there in front of the back four. Yeah, and you, you do a lot of the, the ugly, the dirty work, the ugly work, a lot of it, the unseen work. And you really don't notice these players sometimes until they're missing. Um, well, I think that's why he gets a bad rap because a lot of time over the years, what's it been type of football where you're going over, back, yeah. over, back, over, and all he's really doing is just sitting back and defending because the ball's going over his head. But he, he he's he, I think he's crucial to the way we play and he, just his whole level of experience. I think he has to play ahead of somebody like Josh Cullen. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it is a concern because I mean Glenn is obviously coming to the end of his days. Um, he's not playing regularly I'm not sure if he can last hopefully you're right about not having to do too much running because I'm not sure if he can last 90 minutes and if we were under pressure in the last 15 or 20 minutes hopefully holding on to a 1-0 lead or something um, who do you bring on I mean what are the options um, yeah Josh well, Collins uh, do I mean Charlton are having, having an incredible start in the championship I mean they would think they were certain to be relegated in everybody's eyes and now they're they're up near the top challenging for promotion um, but I don't think you can throw Josh in for his first international in such a crucial game as Switzerland. Yeah, no, I wasn't in such a that. pivotal position. It's just, it's just the, yeah. the, the options. The only <laughs> other option I could see is maybe Egan playing in a defensive midfield role, which wouldn't really see. No, I, I don't. Th- I, I, I think we've tried that playing a centre half in that, with the exception of Paul McGrath. But we've tried it with people like Kevin Moran in the past, and it didn't work very well. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. no point if it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So, so I suppose. Glenn Whelan there, and there's, I suppose in the two other centre mid centre mid spots, who's your your take then? Uh, well, Jeff Hendrick, um, obviously anyway. Yeah, uh, I think he's had a very good campaign um, so far since Mick's come in. I think Mick's kind of given him a new lease of life regarding they give him a bit more of a free role, whereas O'Neill, he looked like he was just restricted so much and couldn't really do it. Now, I I can't imagine how frustrating it would have been playing. That last year under O'Neill, it just looked like so many players were just crying out to be just let go play, and they just couldn't seem to do it. Yeah, no, he's done. He's done pretty well for us. I th- I think maybe 
people hark back, and maybe I do as well, back to 2016 when he was, um, he hit such a good tournament mm. in France and we thought he was really going to kick on from there. And I suppose he hasn't, he hasn't really, he hasn't really done that, you know. Mm. He hasn't hit the heights. Hasn't I hit suppose, the heights of that, yeah, yeah so. Yeah, but uh, like as I say, like he's, he's scored a goal. He's, he's he's been playing well. I know he scored a goal against Gibraltar, but he hadn't scored that goal against Gibraltar. We wouldn't be sitting here top the group, would he? Um, so like I do think people are being very very harsh, um, and I think he has to start. I think you speak about experience. He's been there for 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 big nights. He's played in big tournaments. You know, he he's experienced now. Whether people want yeah. to admit that or not, he's twenty seven. You know, he might not have played too much, but Mick said today that he's played it behind the behind closed doors friendly, and he's played in this Carabao Cup, so he's been playing games. Okay. So he has fitness in his legs. Um, I think that was his only concern. And then Howrahan started the first game for for Villa, and then was kind of just seemed to be faded out. Played in the Carabao Cup and scored two goals, which I think Mick was quite happy about. So I think Howrahan again. Will, will be the other midfielder. I, th- I think he will. I mean, he and and, and he he played. I, I thought he did well against uh, Gibraltar. Um, he maybe got a bit of a bad rap from that game. But who's um, that? Connor 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 Horan, okay. Yeah, and uh, I I think he'll be on a lot of the set piece duty etc. As well. So, uh, I, I, I I yeah. For me, with the people that are available, it's it's Jeff and Connor. I think have to have to play, and Connor yeah. will be on the. The set pieces and that's yeah yeah well, we're in agreement so far i'm not sure if we're going to be for the front three well i think mick i think i think that, that's what i i'd like to see so far and i think that's what mick will yeah. pick well, as i think well. it may, i think it, i think what it is is it makes sense yeah so far anyway um the position out left wing and this is the one that, that bothers me i just mclean's been playing left back for stoke right yeah, and he's playing. He's been playing left, left wing back or left back. Um, Stoke are in the horrors at the moment. Yeah, They're he actually touched on that in the press conference or whatever, and said that you know as players they need to, you know, have a long hard look at themselves and stuff like that. They are going through a bit of a bad spell, all right, and you know, they would class themselves as a big enough club. But for me, the leaking goals all over the place. Um, I can't. Im- I know he scored, but I can't imagine his confidence being too high. No, no. The only thing about James is he never gives. There's nobody more committed in a green shirt than James. Yes, um, he just gives so much and uh, so much energy to the cause. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's probably it's it's it, it's a bad time. I mean, it's a bad time for Stoke. Their manager has got to be under pressure as well. Mm-hmm. He's playing out of position and. I think his place. I, I I think he probably will play, but it's got to be under threat for for Thursday night. Yeah, well, he's actually second choice left back. Mick said today. He said if anything happens to end it, that, that, sh- that James he's the is going to have to left. Yeah. That's why Greg Cunningham wasn't brought in. Um, so I'm just thinking though, if you if you look other than James McLean, who else you can put in there? Alan Judge could be in I, with a show. Don't think Alan Judge is going to start. He might be in with a shout, and I think he may well play, but I don't think he's going to start. Yeah, I think Callum O'Dowda is someone who's going to be very close. He's somebody I like. He's got yeah. a lot of skill. I like him too. Um, maybe James gives more defensively than than Callum. So, and, yeah, and we are going to be we are going to be asking everybody to to track back and defend as well. Yeah. But uh, I, I think Callum would be would be close. Yeah, I'd actually like to see Alan George be the be the one on the on the left, if I'm honest, or if I had a choice between maybe Robinson on the left and maybe George on the right, um, because he changed the game against Denmark, and I, I think probably we haven't seen enough of him. Yeah, and he's always done well in Ireland, New Jersey. Let's not forget he scored the winning goal against USA in a very very bad time for Irish football. Like we just there was nothing good yeah. going on. Um, it's just he's gone. He's down now in League One. Yeah, and no, I get. That I don't too. think he's even playing. Uh, I'd have to look at the stats. No, he played the last two. Has he played the last yeah. two? Okay, right. He's well, Mick confirmed place. it today. Yeah, I, okay. I, I didn't actually. All right, okay. Myself. All right, I, I, I kind of realised he hadn't started the season with Ipswich anyway. Yeah. Um, and we're going about right and left. I mean, I think Callum Robinson to me has to start. 
and I think he will start and he has to start on, yeah. well he's our on, form man th- he's the form player he scored at the weekend so uh, Callum Robinson is going to play and I definitely be the first name I'd have for our front three at the moment yeah. you know so you have I think we're both going to be in agreement with that focal point has to be it's McGoldrick. David McGoldrick yeah. yeah I think and it will be and it has to yeah. be I mean that's fairly obvious uh, and we're going to have Callum Robinson as well um, probably outright Probably outright, and well, I mean, yeah, I think if you're going to look at what I think Mick will play is, I think he will play James yeah. on the left. He'll play Callum on the right and play David McGoldrick in the middle. Yeah, um, I really like Callum O'Dowda. I think he's got to be close, but for Thursday, I would go for James. Right. Well, that's the that's the um, the biggest one. Let us know, I suppose, in the comments who, who you guys would have on that on that left hand side. I think everyone else probably be in agreement in regards to, you know, Robinson McGoldrick. Maybe not Glenn Whelan, but uh, and maybe not Richard okay. Kyo. I think they're the, but I think everyone else, every everyone else would probably agree with. Yeah, and I think Alan Judge will play. I think it, well, if we're if we're chasing the game at some stage, yeah. he will, he will come on. He can pick a pass. He might be the man to open mm. it up. Well, Mick actually likened them to Shakiri today. Okay, yeah, well, well, someone tried to link. Someone tried to liken Shakiri to Jack Byrne, and then he said Alan Judge is more like. Uh, Shakiri than Jack Brown because they're playing two different positions. He's yeah, a bit more wired. But yeah, but Judgey can be that kind of player. He can come on. He's good on the ball. Um, yeah, pick out a pass. Uh, maybe score a goal. But it shows know. how highly he thinks of Alan Judge. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, I, I was absolutely delighted Shakiri is not coming here on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant news. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's he's a loss for the Swiss, and uh, I think we'll see Alan Judge at some stage on on Thursday. I think we could well see Callum O'Dowda as well, if even if yeah, uh, James does point, start yeah. at some point. Again, somebody a bit of trickery may may open them up. Well, there's Ronan Curtis there as well. Ronan Curtis maybe. Um, if he we need a goal, um, Scott Hogan possibly yeah. um, might be worth a, a look as well. Again and again, we'll see some of these against Bulgaria. Obviously, yeah, I think it'll be a very different team. And yeah, well, we'll be doing our own kind of take yeah. on that as well. We'll be sitting here doing it, but. Um, well, that's been our, our team, I suppose. Then Darren Randolph and goal, left back end of Stevens, right back Seamus Coleman, uh, two centre backs Richard Kyo and Shane Duffy. Um, then in midfield of Whelan, Howrahan, and Jeff Hendrick, and then up front or up top, I suppose, McLean, and McGoldrick, and uh, Callum Robinson. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Huge thanks to Gary for coming on. If you don't follow him, check him out on Twitter uh, at Spain Gary, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. So check out, give Gary a follow. Top man. Um, drop a like on the video and if you haven't subscribed, please do so now. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to speak to you all soon. Come on, you boys in green.